Well, let's go ahead and get started, and we might still have a few other people join us. We are recording the call. Um, I would like to introduce Audra Haney, the Senior Project Manager of Infant and Early Child Mental Health. Did I get it all? Yeah. Close? Yeah. Close enough. Close she's, enough. She's so forgiving. <laughs> it's amazing. And then we also have with us in my little cubicle, Lisa White from the E-Team. And um, some of you may have met Lisa and some of you haven't. There she is. Um, sometimes Lisa has come out on data meetings, so you may have met her. But frequently she's in the office at E-Team um, behind the scenes running things and being a wonderful support for all of us. So, uh, And then we have Sherilyn Edlund from Lighthouse and Tiffany Patterson from Lighthouse and Brittany Rutledge from Creok. Am I missing anybody? Okay, I do have the chat function on if you would rather use that than speak up. Um, so last week when we were at the school in McAllister, I kind of went over a little bit of the knowledge and know-how curriculum and there were some questions, so I recruited Audra to come this morning and give us a little more information about that and maybe answer any questions that you have. So I'm going to turn it over to Audra. All right, so um, thank you for letting me come and talk to you this morning about knowledge and know-how. So it is an eight-session uh, eight online course that can be done at your discretion. Um, you have a year from the time that you um, sign up to complete the eight sessions. And they typically don't take more than about 30 minutes to get through. There are some videos to watch and some self-reflection to do as you work through the course. Um, but the material really is focused on working with families, particularly with kids zero to three. So there's some information about uh, typical child development, um, establishing positive relationships with parents, how to support them, um, things around preventing child abuse, so ways to promote um, protective factors for families. Um, there's also information about temperament. So we know that um, kids have, they just, they come with a, a bit of a temperament and some tendencies and uh, so there's a, a session that talks about the match between um, child and parent and how that can impact relationship and connection for them. You mean they don't all come exactly alike? They don't. It's oh. crazy how okay. that works. Um, I think, it, you know, it's, it's really amazing. We, we talk a lot about um, what parents bring to the table, but oftentimes we don't think about what baby brings to the table. Absolutely. And they certainly bring their own little self. Yes, um, yes, when we're thinking about really young children, they don't really function separately from caregiver, right? They're very much connected to my relationship with my mom and my dad and those who take care of me. Um, so, when we're thinking about services, that's why we're always talking about mm -hmm. how we have to serve that relationship that the client, when we're talking about zero to three, is really about what's happening between child and parent. Um, but they they bring a lot to the table. It is a relationship. It is a back and forth. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we want to think about what is it that they bring to the table. So, um, yes, this these sessions are really targeted at zero to three, but I think you would agree with me. There's a lot of information in the eight sessions that really applies to all parents. And it's really about good parenting for any child. Mm -hmm. um, you know, protective factors really apply to everyone regardless. Um, so I think there's a lot of material contained in those models in the modules, the online modules, that would be helpful regardless of the age group that you're sure. working with. Definitely extra um, extrapolatable. Yes, but that's a word. Um, also highlight some of the uniqueness that we find um, when working with 
the zero to three population. Um, the fact that so much is happening developmentally, you know, big brain changes are happening during that period of time, lots of opportunity. And so we want to make sure to take advantage of all that opportunity. Cool. So um, we have quite a few licenses still available. And um, so Sherilyn, you can get a license. Yes. And you can share with your friends. If you, would, if you know of other folks in your community that you think would benefit from this information, we have until the end of February to get these used. And I probably have half of them still oh, available. Wow. So that's around 50, give or take. Wow, okay. So we have lots. And I would love to see as many of those used as possible. Me too, because it's, it's our tax dollars that paid for those. Mm -hmm. So we definitely need to use them. And then once they set up the account by the end of February, then yes. they have a year. And you have a whole year to, to actually, actually get through, through the module. Yes. Yeah. So there's not, there's not a rush in terms of, oh, I have to sign up and then do all of them by the end of February. Absolutely not. That's just cool. just get the, the sign up done mm -hmm. by the end of February. Okay. Even if you don't do anything else, that will use the license and give you access for a full year. Awesome. So this particular group are the embedded care coordinators. Mm -hmm. They're all working specifically with children that are in foster care. So perfect group to be using this with. Yes. Yeah, so your child welfare workers that are supporting those kiddos, if you've got zero to three, awesome. those would be great people to go through it, and I would be happy for them to access That is a it. fabulous idea. So two of the ladies that are on the phone today um, are actually relatively new embedded care coordinators, and okay. so they're just now getting um, out to the DHS offices and getting to know those workers. Mm -hmm. This might be a great gift for them. Yes. Uh, to help you guys build those relationships. The resource, the tool to offer. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Are there any questions that I can answer about the module or how do you, how you access? Did we share? We've shared the link. I shared the link. Okay. Um, I can share it again. That's not a problem. Also, we did get to watch the demonstration. Okay. Great. Of the modules yeah. um, while we were together last week. And that, that's that a helpful. good example of what they look like. Mm -hmm. So they're very much, um, you know, there's definitely some interaction in them. There's quite a bit of video to watch. Um, you might watch an interaction between mm -hmm. child and parent or child parent and a home visitor. And then there are some reflections to think about what did you see in that interaction? What are some things you could take away from them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, very interesting information. Any questions? So the only thing we need to do is follow the link and get signed up. Is that yes. correct? Okay. Yes. If you'll do that by the end of February, that would be perfect. Um, one of the ladies that was there last week actually was trying to do that and was having some trouble with okay. it. I don't want to throw you under the bus as the person to manage that. So what do they need to do if they run into any problems? If it's a problem with access, they may need to reach out to the zero to three help desk. Okay. Um, sometimes there, it can be a little glitchy depending on which mm -hmm. browser you're using. So you may want to consider switching to a different browser if you run into trouble. Have you found one that works better than others? Um, probably I've had best success with Firefox or um, Google Chrome. Okay. Um, That's pretty standard. Yeah, I don't know that Internet Explorer works very well with it. Yeah, that might have been what she was on. Um, and just ensuring like Flash is enabled to be able to watch videos, some okay. of that kind of thing. But um, yeah, if they run into trouble as far as getting signed up, um, the zero to three helpline may be the best way to go. But mm -hmm. um, if they have, if they want to reach out to me, that's fine. I can try to help, but. <laughs> okay. You know, I understand that. But like I said, also, I my best up. suggestion is probably to try a different browser first. Okay. All right. Um, just to see if that might be the issue. That makes sense. Good question. Thank you, Sherilyn. Any others? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then I will send out that information. 
and um, again, and make sure that everybody has it. And then um, can I add your contact to that? Yeah, or okay. absolutely. I will add Audra's contact to that. Do you have any other questions about infant and early childhood yep. mental health while well, we yeah. have her here? Because this is the perfect opportunity. I'll invite you to make something up. Okay, let me do a plug for our um, early childhood track at the Children's Behavioral Health Conference. I'm really excited. I'm hopeful that um, what I've put together will be able to all come about. Um, but I can give you some hints as to some of the things that we are looking at and are hopeful to have be there. That'd be awesome. Um, one is Circle of Security. Um, so they won't be doing the full out circle of security and you would not be required to have gone through circle of security before coming to the session, but it will be my, um, my I propose that it's going to be the Institute day. Mm -hmm. And so they'll be talking about the application within childcare settings, which I think nice. is a really interesting kind of twist on that. They will go over kind of generally the principles of circle of security that would be part of the presentation. So it'd be a nice introduction to circle of security and then um, a bit of a twist on how how that could be applied and, and utilized. Um, so that's one we're looking at. Another one that we're looking at is um, Sherry Alderman and she is from Oregon. She is a developmental behavioral um, pediatrician and um, she will be talking about the impact of trauma from early on, so early childhood. Um, it within her talk includes information about pregnancy, and um, so even the impact during pregnancy. It's really nice cool. presentation. She's really great and breaks down some kind of complex kinds of ideas to an, a level that's understandable to all of us. Joe Schmoes, cool. who may not really get all the medical stuff or um, some of that piece. So um, I'm hopeful that she's going to be able to come. And cool. she actually has a couple of webinars out online, if you Google her, um, that were done for Oregon. Mm -hmm. And they're really great information if you're just, you know, curious about kind of uh, what happens in pregnancy mm -hmm. when we have a mom who's living in kind of a chronic, like, stressful situation. That never happens in Oklahoma. No, that doesn't happen. That's really unique and certainly thing. doesn't happen for those families that we're working with who are child welfare involved. So, um, anyway, some really great information. Um, I can share those links with you. That would be awesome. To make, make it really easy for them to access those. Sure. Because I think they're really great information and That's kind great. of what prompted me to um, invite her to Oklahoma. So I'm really excited about that. Um, we're also, so the third day, um, our more local presenters, we're, um, we've talked to the Chickasaw Nation, they have a project launch grant mm -hmm. and are doing a lot of community work. And so they're going to come talk about their project. And, um, so I'm really excited, Mr. Boyd mm -hmm. and, um, I don't remember the other name of the presenter, but someone else from her division would come and talk about their work in their community and, um, Culture, how cultural aligns with the work that they're doing. Oh, so yeah. I just think it's a really interesting twist to hear from our tribal partners about the work that they're doing around early childhood. Um, oftentimes, many of our tribal partners are really doing some excellent work in this mm -hmm. area and have some really innovative strategies and ideas. So I just think that her community work is pretty cool. um, fascinating. It's, it's just great. So I'm really excited about that. Um, Glade Topham, you may have heard his name before. He is now with, uh, in Kansas, but he used to be at OSU. And he will be talking about minding the couple. So really thinking about the relationship between parents mm -hmm. as a couple and how that comes to play when we're thinking about the whole family and serving that family. Yeah. Um, so it's a piece that we don't always think a lot about, um, but because we often focus on that parent-child relationship, but um, 
the relationship that's happening between mom and dad, the couple, uh, is also really super important. Hugely important. <clears throat> Hugely. So his, his presentation will really focus around that. And then the, my last one that I've proposed is one around working with court systems. So really thinking about if you are serving within infant mental health, what does it look like um, to really be interacting with a court and supporting mm -hmm. what's happening within a court um, case? So what's the role of, a, of an infant mental health provider within the court system? Um, how do you communicate with them? Mm -hmm. What do reports look like? What kinds of information can I share? And the different relationship between forensic versus therapeutic relationships. Absolutely. Yeah. So that is, that's good. Yeah. So it's quite full. It's a lot of information in three days. Yes, it and, is. Um, so I'm hopeful that all of those that's are going to be that's able funny. to come. We'll we'll see how that all pans out. But cool. Um, do we have any infant massage trainings on the horizon, or are we kind of past that at this point? Um. So I don't because. The past couple that I've had have been really hard to fill okay. and have been primarily filled with people outside of our providers. And so that sure. has communicated to me that you saturated the market. So we saturated. What I am considering doing is nurturing caregivers, mm -hmm. which is the next, it's the follow up to okay. infant massage. And that's really about working with child care providers. Mm -hmm. um, so I am considering doing that. Okay. If they're seems to be an interest. Okay. Um, but if there definitely is a, so what I would say is speak up. If there is a strong desire to have infant massage come again, mm -hmm. I need to hear that um, to know that that's something that we okay. should look at. Very good. Very good. Um, you want to do a plug for the echo calls? Yes. So those occur. They're occurring right now. Ah, <laughs> so, so we're totally conflicting right now. But every Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock. So if you're not on this call, mm -hmm. then um, yes, great opportunity. Infant Mental Health Project ECHO, uh, a call open to anyone that is working with infants and toddlers. I will say it has a clinical focus, but I think you can learn a lot from that discussion. Um, and not that other, that you wouldn't have a, a place to contribute, because I absolutely think that you would. Um, so you could really add to the conversation. But there is a nice presentation at the beginning of each echo of about 15 minutes of some topic that is important to working with infants and toddlers. So I think there's a lot to learn, even if you were like, okay, so the case isn't so super interesting to me, but mm -hmm. the material presented at the beginning of each echo call, I think would be super helpful. Awesome. Um, they're currently talking about consultation right now. Okay. And um, so from the next, I think, three maybe. Mm -hmm. So today and the next couple are going to be centered around consultation. Okay. Um, but, yeah, some really interesting topics and usually then a case presentation by a clinician that's serving a mm -hmm. child in early childhood. So somewhere between zero and five, typically. We've, some of them have gone up to six. Um, you can really, so in some arenas, you can really take early childhood up to eight. Yeah. So, um, especially if you've got delays. Mm -hmm. So really any, any ages in there, um, are the kinds of cases that are presented. And we've also had done some follow-ups where we've gotten to hear kind of where they are now versus awesome. when they were first starting. Those are important. Um, we don't get enough. We actually did that last week, and it was really great to hear just some of the progress that had been made. Mm -hmm. um, and then so the clinician was really kind of asking for um, some validation on what the next steps were. She had some ideas, but she mm -hmm. kind of wanted to validate that. And so that was it was great. It was really great to hear the work that she had done. Oh, cool. It was a young mom. And new baby, and um, you could really see the progress that had been made mm -hmm. uh, in being able to be ready to be a parent, which was really nice. Yeah, that's nice fabulous. To see. I think we need more people more of that. Mm -hmm. So, a uh, really an opportunity to break the cycle mm -hmm. so that we don't see 
a child coming into care. Yeah, we'd like to prevent that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I I certainly think your um, the care coordinators um, could get a lot out of that call and could contribute. Mm-hmm. And it's a voice we haven't heard a lot from. Right. Um. So yeah, right. I think it would be great. That'd be awesome. So can you get me the information? I sure can. The echo calls again, and I'll yeah. send that out as well. Sure can. And anybody can sign up for that. And even if you don't have the opportunity to get on the call, there's also a box account associated mm-hmm. with the Echo Calls. So they record each of those presentations that mm-hmm. are at the beginning, and those are uploaded to the box account and resources. So information that's shared no. during any of the calls is also uploaded. Okay. So I totally think that the box account is worth signing up for Project Echo. Um, they will give you access to that account when you sign up. Awesome. Is that free? Mm-hmm. It is totally, free. Totally free. free. All free. Yes. Yeah, awesome. yeah, cool. So a great resource and a way to really create community <coughs> around uh, mm-hmm. this population and serving young children. Nice. Right. Yeah. Okay. So any, also, qu- any questions? Share that in the world oh, yes. of Definitely. your influence and people that you know uh, who are working with yes. young children. Yeah. Um, any questions from our listeners? Um, None that I can think of. Okay. Thank you, Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany's having trouble uh, being heard this morning, so she's doing in the chat. So I appreciate that, Tiffany. She says no. And so the experience, I will say the experience of uh, Project Echo is very similar. They use a Zoom um, platform. So that will be really, so another opportunity to get used to it. Um, They do use video so that you can see the the hub team. So there there are a group of um, four really experts in the field that mm-hmm. serve as the hub team to give um, the, they ask questions and give feedback. They also ask that those who call in, mm-hmm. you have the opportunity to also ask questions Great. and provide some feedback if you have some ideas about, mm-hmm. you know, resources or supports that might help the, the family that um, uh, that is, you know, part of the case that's presented. Um, but yeah, there's a team there to make sure that you know, nice. that it all runs smoothly, and they um, so they document all of that. Nice, very nice, and provide so the person who presents the case actually gets a written report of what they talk about. Oh, on the that's call. very helpful. Yeah, yeah, helpful. so it's great. We do that with a tip call. Just send out a note for Perfect. what was suggested. Yes. Yeah. So I want, can I shift hats for just a moment? Mm-hmm. Um. You also used to run a foster care I did. agency. For about eight years. Yes. Mm-hmm. Last week we had a question about um, the training that foster parents get. Yes. And then I'll just give you some background. If I can't remember specifically. I think it was you, Sherilyn, that was maybe talking about this particular case. But there's one um, foster care agency in Region 4 that is getting a lot of foster parents apparently from like the same congregation. Okay. Where the congregation has decided to push, you know, hey, mm-hmm. we need to take care of kids. It's not uncommon that you partner with a right. religious Which community. A, it's a great thing. To identify families, yeah. And the embedded care coordinator has noticed some unrealistic expectations mm. yeah. among the foster parents mm-hmm. that are um, – with this particular agency. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to kind of, as you know, you've had that experience running the agency. Right. um, Anything that you could share to our embedded care coordinators that might be helpful to those private agencies? Yeah, so the training that that everybody uses is is a standardized training. So Mm -hmm. you're required to use what is provided to you by the state of Oklahoma. I did not know that. However, you can add to. Mm -hmm. We just can't take away. Okay, that makes sense. Um, So, uh, for example, the agency that I worked with, we had a strong belief in TBRI principles. Would you tell us about TBRI? So that's trust-based relational intervention. Um, 
and it's approach out of Texas that really um, tries to help uh, foster parents and adoptive parents understand the impact that um, trauma and the and the experiences that a child has had coming into foster care mm -hmm. or coming into adoption that really can impact the way their brain works, the way they, they understand the world. And um, it, so their principles really start with connection, mm -hmm. right, and empowerment mm -hmm. before you ever get to correction. So they very much are about we need to establish relationships. We need to have felt safety. Mm -hmm. We need to. You have to earn it. And we need to understand the yeah. needs that a child brings and what behavior, mm -hmm. behavior's expression of needs, right? So we need. all the time. Right. So it's really about communication. So we need to understand what's behind the behavior. Mm -hmm. And we need to set kids up for success by ensuring that some of those basic needs are met. Things like ensuring that we have regular access to hydration, mm -hmm. to water, all the time, right? Right, Because we all get cranky and I don't know function at our best um, when our physical needs aren't taken care of. So water, food, healthy snacks, mm -hmm. um, you know, oftentimes we know that kids who are in state custody have experienced things like inconsistent access to food. Yes. Um, not knowing if I was going to be and sadly that even happens fed. when they're in foster care. And that can also happen in yeah. foster care absolutely. So um anyway, so it's a great approach. So we used to add to mm -hmm. what we presented to our initial our new foster parents. Um but you know it's tough because foster parents certainly come to the table with some of their own ideas. They've Maybe they've raised children, and so, yes. you know, a lot of times we have this thought in our head, well, all kids are the same, and I, I know how to do this. I've parented before. Great, you've parented before. You've parented a child that you birthed and raised and grew up in your home, and yes. you established a relationship, and then you can discipline from that relationship. Right. But you don't have a relationship with these kiddos, and you, you weren't part of their early experiences. So we need to approach discipline from a different perspective. Right. And it needs to be one about teaching and learning mm -hmm. rather than punishing, stopping. So that training isn't something that's consistently given to foster parents. That's something that your agency added into the training. Right. So I think um, in a lot of ways CHS is, is thinking about that type mm -hmm. of approach and that kind of information and trying to think about how do they more widely and see those, mm -hmm. those kinds of ideas across their system. I think, you know, if you're seeing something consistent with um, those foster parents, it might be worth a reach out to the agency just mm -hmm. to say, you know, <clears throat> how can we support you? <clears throat> right. And that this is kind of something we're seeing mm -hmm. and maybe there's a way to offer some support to those families just to help them understand a little better about mm -hmm. where these kids come from and, Okay. what their experiences are like um, right. and how to how to be prepared to care mm -hmm. for them. Okay. It's easy to, you know, as a, a new, you also can talk a lot about what it's going to be like and then it, it's not. It's right. Well, and I can tell you all those things, but if you haven't experienced it, mm -hmm. um, sometimes I think, folks just kind of put that yeah well it's not going to be that like yeah, yeah. that for me or mm -hmm. you know I, we're going to be fine they yeah. just need to be loved and it'll all be okay mm -hmm. all right okay and so yeah yeah uh, do y'all have any questions for Audra around that particular uh, so I think issue? um you know, establishing a relationship with that mm -hmm. foster care provider um you know kind of introducing yourself as a resource in the community and a support to foster parents. Yeah. How could I help you, partner with you? Um, coming at it from that approach, I think, probably is the better, best way to go with that. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Oh. Sherilyn, did you have any other questions about that? Because I think that was what you brought up. No, I was just curious, you know, about the the 
training that they they got since it seemed like some of the places um, approached it real differently but it sounds like there there's a standardized thing that they're supposed to get and then they can add to that so um, yes and it's about exactly how many hours like around 40 is quite a bit of, yeah it's quite a large number of hours um, I would say that you know the trauma pieces are a bit weak in the standardized training um, I think they know that but I don't and I now have been away for a while so I don't know what work right. they've done on um, improving that or making well, we've some had changes you for, what, three years here? Uh, no, not quite about a year and a half oh. um, two this summer wow. okay. yeah wow. so so um, Tiffany uh, asked us in the chat can you send an email with the information for that additional training for foster parents I'm sure I will include what I've got in the email I send out to follow up and then I'm, if you have anything else to add Audra I can add that as well yeah so TVRI is um, you had suggested a few books to me I um, the connected child is mm -hmm. a great resource for foster parents mm -hmm. um, so we can certainly send out that information the um, halo project is a uh, counseling center here mm -hmm. in, in Oklahoma City um, it, so TBRI does have a site where you can look to find a mm -hmm. TBRI practitioner um, so we could we could send that out and okay. we could send out kind of a we could do a video there's some YouTubes that have just kind of a general description oh, okay. of what TBRI principles yeah. are we all could right. do so that, we're gonna all that yeah all right good we question can, Tiffany we can get you some of that and you're welcome <laughs> And yes, the, the connected child. Um, it's an easy read. It's really targeted to parents. Mm -hmm. It's in their in their vocabulary. It's not good. You know, not clinical. No, not at all. Yeah. It takes those clinical principles and just nice. says, "What does it look like in reality? What does that mean?" Nice. Yeah. So those are they're great. Um, talks about concepts like reading. Mm -hmm. Again, that yes. approach of I'm trying to teach a behavior. Mm -hmm. So or I teach a, a skill and so um, you know if we have a child who like just comes up and grabs some something out of your hand and, and doesn't ask mm -hmm. right we could one a way to approach that is to offer a redo <coughs> right to correct the behavior and say let's try that again mm -hmm. um, I always tell the story that yeah. when um, when I was about maybe 10 I'm sorry moving the camera when I was about 10 <laughs> Uh, I spent a lot of time at my grandmother's house with my cousin, and my cousin Carl thought that he knew everything, and that really annoys those of us who do. <laughs> yeah. And I got angry with him, and I, I slammed the door as I was walking out of the house. And my grandma uh, went to the door and said, Nancy Ann, you get back here right now. And then I spent the next, it seemed like 45 minutes, just opening and shutting the door just to practice. All right. Right? Yeah. So that's kind of a redo idea for me. Let's practice um, it the correct way. <laughs> yeah, I would say they'd probably take a little slightly. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, probably, probably wouldn't do that for 45 Grandma minutes. definitely wasn't but trained in TBR. No, yes. no, Grandma, they, they have their own special way. But um, certainly offering the opportunity to do, mm -hmm. it, do it again in a way that's more appropriate. Right. And then we move on. And that's mm -hmm. the beauty of it is that we don't um so maybe she should have had me do it once and then, and let then me probably go. move on yeah, yeah. but so okay, we're not shaming and it's not about shaming mm -hmm. it's not about uh, really you know dwelling on what we did we mm -hmm. just, just try again we're just trying it again and we're moving on yeah. with the rest of our day that in and of itself that concept of redo might be one of the most important things for foster parents to, mm -hmm. to get yes yeah, an offer at repair mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But oh, we caused some harm here, but we can mm -hmm. we can repair and we can move on. Yeah, and it seems so. That seems like a really important thing concept to teach kids, especially kids that are in foster Great care, concept. when reunification is going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, because we kind of you know a lot of those kids struggle with forgiving mom and dad. Oh, for sure. For what's happened, and yeah. then, um, that concept so, of yes. redo could be really important. Learning for that. that um, we all make mistakes, and mm -hmm. sometimes we do things that we aren't really proud of, but um, you're not perfect? Yeah, no. I'm not it's hard perfect. to believe. 
Okay. So well, cool. Yeah. So yes, it can be a great tool for helping kids kind of get their heads around mm-hmm. reunification and yeah, the idea it. that we can do differently, mm-hmm. parents can do differently. Yeah. Past doesn't have to dictate the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, one last one last opportunity for you to ask our baby whisperer anything <laughs> that you want to ask. She always laughs when I call her that, but I don't. I, I don't get think called lots wrong. of things, baby lady. I know. Uh, like, Better than the trauma lady. Pam used to be called the trauma lady. Yeah. I don't know that I would want to be the trauma I don't trauma think I lady. want that moniker now. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, Brittany, did you have any questions? None, none, none that I can think of right now. Okay. Well, I will invite you to ask them later if you think of any. Tiffany, same with you. Sherilyn, mm-hmm. same with you. You guys uh, think of any questions that you have later on. You are always welcome to shoot me an email or shoot me a text, and I can either get those questions to Audra if they're baby questions or early child questions, and if not, I will find out the appropriate response. All right, so I think we're going to go ahead and um, end the call if there's not any other questions. Audra, I want to thank you very much for being here and sharing your expertise. Absolutely. Lisa, I want to thank you for being here and having my back, literally having my back. (laughs) Yes. Paul, we're all learning, right? (laughs) All right. All learning. So Lisa will be um, uploading the recording to the same YouTube channel where the WebEx videos were. Um, As soon as she has an opportunity, she's kind of (coughs) doing double duty these days, maybe triple duty these days. (laughs) At the evening. Yeah. So um, if you could shoot me an email when you have that up, okay, I can send that out and make sure everybody gets it. Okay. Sounds great. That would be great. All right. All right. So go forth and do good work today, ladies. Thank, Thank you. Guys. Thank you all.